Now, when we discussed moral relativism earlier, I mentioned that some of the major reasons given for thinking that relativism was right were really wrong, that it was a bad argument. In fact, that's what my example about breaking the board in class was intended to show. So, I mean, but now we're talking about the charge that relative, any kind of relativism leads to moral skepticism. And maybe people are going to say, well, you know, that's not so bad. That is, there aren't these absolute values. It's all relative. And in fact, maybe they say knowledge isn't absolute in the way you're making, making it sound, but knowledge is relative to cultures and relative to different societies. And in fact, that's the version of, cult, of moral relativism that seems to be most, most widely adapted. And it's the bane of my existence uh, or the bane of this course. I used to spend a lot of time on moral relativism only to discover that these, most of the students come in thinking moral relativism is true, and when they leave, after they hear all my arguments, they still think it's, it's correct. So I've cut down the amount of time I spend on it, but it's still worthwhile considering that moral relativism, in particular the most prominent version, cultural relativism, that right and wrong is relative different to different cultures. Remember my example? That is, female genital mutilation was wrong in the United States, but right in Somalia. For, for example, assuming that it is right in, uh, in, in, in Somalia. <laughs> but there are other problems for cultural relativism, other consequences of cultural rel relativism that seem hard to accept. And the first one I want to talk about is, if cultural relativism is true, that is, right and wrong varies from culture to culture, there is, you cannot compare moral codes of societies. Not that you shouldn't try to, not that you're trying, but you can't make these assessments. So you could never judge one moral code of a society to be better than the moral code of another society. I think there are some examples that really pose problems in this regard. We got involved in World War II, that is the United States, because we thought what Germany was doing, what Nazi Germany was doing, was immoral. And we were going to prevent them from trying to take over the world. And, you know, we're fortunate enough that uh, we prevailed. Otherwise, we'd all be speaking Ger German, and I probably wouldn't exist. Um, nonetheless, I think while the United States during World War II might have not been the greatest society uh, in existence, that is, there were, there were some societal problems that were moral problems, segregation, there was a segregated army, there were uh, there were other issues of civil rights. Nonetheless, I think it was far better morally than Nazi Germany that was carting off people based on their religion, that they were Jewish and or they were actually the, the descendants of Jews, which is the way it really, and carting them off to death camps and killing them. And I think when we compare those two moral codes of the society, I think it's pretty clear that the United States, the moral code of the United States, was a lot better than that of Nazi Germany. Furthermore, if you think about it, go back to about 1860 when slavery was still an institution in the South, in the United States, but not in the North. If we compare the, moral, the moral codes in the South to the North, we certainly can say that the North was much better. Not saying it's perfect. Not saying it was everything they did was right, but we certainly can seem to be able to make these comparisons and make decisions. So this seems to be a, a sticking problem for most kinds of relativism, and certainly cultural relativism. Second problem, it's kind of strange. When we think about trying to figure out what's right and wrong, in fact, if we think about the trolley problem when we started, we didn't think the right way to do that was to decide by having a, an election, voting on it, or by polling people. But if moral cultural relativism is true, the way we figure what's right in a particular society is by consulting the practices of our society, the society that we're in. That's how we're going to figure out that it's uh, what's right or wrong. And that doesn't seem to be right. That's not the way we figure out what really is right or wrong. I mean, let's say we polled you know, apartheid South Africa, uh, what would we find out there? Apartheid was the right thing to do? I think that doesn't make any sense. And I think that's wrong. The next problem is 
we have this notion of moral progress. Perhaps the United States, I shouldn't say perhaps, the United States is not a perfectly moral society today. However, if we compare the moral code today versus the moral code, for example, before civil rights or before women's suffrage, at very other, various other times, we'd find out that we have made progress morally. And that's actually moral progress is kind of contingent on being able to compare moral, uh, moral codes. And the final problem with cultural relativism, and I think it's a problem with relativism in general, you may have heard of this gentleman, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Involved in the civil rights movement in the 1960s. He was a social reformer. But if we think about it, what did the moral code of society when he was trying to reform society, what was it right or wrong for him to claim that everybody should change? Well, society in general thought what he was doing was wrong. For example, President Johnson, I think maybe President Kennedy also were telling him, oh, you're expecting too much change, too fast, give us some time. And he would not do that. He he went forward with his program of civil disobedience. And as a result, things changed. The moral code of the United States changed substantially. But what's strange is if moral, if cultural relativism is true, A social reformer is always doing the wrong thing. He's never doing the right thing. And I think we should all concede that what Martin Luther King was doing was was right. Not everything, but certainly his his, uh, protesting against, uh, or protesting, I should say, in favor of civil rights was absolutely uh, the right thing to do. So I think for these reasons, I tend to think that cultural relativism is... Know, an unacceptable position. But I think at least we notice that there are some difficulties with the position. So I don't think we want to take relativism, cultural relativism in particular, as answering our question of how it is that we found one moral principle to be true in one case, another moral principle to be true in